When the company started in 1985, it was just four people and it, and it grew very gradually, it sort of grew organically because we didn't have any major investors. We, we, we did business and then reinvested the, the profits back in, so that meant a fairly slow growth. But it, in the 90s, it started to accelerate and in the, in the last uh, decade, uh, since 2000, we, we have been achieving nearly 20% per annum year-on-year uh, -year growth, both in terms of our revenues, which is, as I say, nearly all export earnings, um, and I think to date we have n approached nearly 400 million now in export earnings. And of course in people, the, the company has grown. Uh, it's grown from the original four people now to, to something like say 320. Uh, alongside then is the, 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 the 100 people in the space center. So it, you know, the total army is around about 420. So that's quite a significant uh, um, contribution to employment in a very high technology, highly skilled area. Conventional satellites at that time were really about the size of a, uh, a London double-decker bus and also they cost you know, hundreds of millions, sometimes even billions of pounds. What we were trying to do was to see if we could shrink all of that down into something the size of a domestic fridge or domestic television. Now it wasn't possible to have all the capabilities of the big satellites in, in such a small box. Uh, certainly initially, but what we were able to do was to build a very small satellite which was highly capable at a very small cost. And that really created the whole concept of what has now been, been called the micro-satellite, which was to do really for space what the personal computer did for computing. Our early satellites uh, were really about proving uh, technology. Um, today we're very familiar with um, digital cameras, uh, or everybody's cell phone, etc. Well, back in the 1980s, that was a very new technology, and so we actually flew some of the very early British um, digital cameras, if you like, on our first uh, two satellites. This board here is uh, the digital camera from our fifth satellite launched in, in 1991, and it needed all this electronics just to drive the sensor that, that, that makes the images. Well, images still plays an important role for us and uh, a current uh, uh, set of missions, known as the, dis the Disaster Monitoring Constellation, has played a unique role in providing worldwide coverage of, uh, of natural disasters. And uh, right now, for example, the satellites are involved with the, the, the Pakistan flooding uh, disaster, uh, the Chinese um, landslip disasters. In fact, we were uh, we'd established the, uh, the constellation um, in time for the Asian tsunami disaster and that was one of the first really big missions that, uh, that uh, the satellites were used to image the affected area and to provide those images effectively as maps to the humanitarian workers. So Surrey Satellite or SSTL <coughs> actually designs, builds, arranges for the launch and then operates the satellites in, in orbit. In fact we're in the control room at the moment which uh, tracks the spacecraft as they fly overhead. So we have clean rooms, we have design facilities, we have manufacturing capabilities and in fact we do everything pretty well from a blank sheet of paper right the way through the design, the, 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 the testing, the manufacturing, the assembly taking it to the launch site, integrating the satellites onto the rocket, watching the, uh, the launch go ahead, uh, and then uh, tracking the satellites once in orbit. So, in fact, we do pretty well everything except the actual rocket bit. In January 2010, Surrey Satellite Technology Limited won a contract to produce 14 navigation payloads for Europe's Global Navigation Satellite System program. And space uh, is one of the sectors where Despite the recession, we've seen key growth, and uh, in a recent uh, uh, study put forward to the uh, government, um, it's become clear actually just how important space is to the UK economy and how um, this, this high-tech area really has uh, weathered the recession and um, gives us an opportunity to actually grow uh, our exports and our, our industry generally. In fact, we could have 10% of the global market in space, which is remarkable if you think about it for, for a relatively small country like the United Kingdom. These satellites uh, have to be based on original ideas, and so currently there's about 320 people in, in SSTL. We have another 100 people very roughly in the Surrey Space Centre, which is the academic research institute, if you like, for the company working very closely together. And those hundred people are sitting there thinking of all the new ideas years ahead 
Um, some of the ideas are used quite quickly within one or two years by the company. Other ideas that they're looking at in the academic team are perhaps 15 or 20 years ahead. Uh, our fundamental research on the 80s looking at radiation environments seems a very esoteric thing to do. You know, the effects of protons and alpha particles and cosmic rays on electronics. What has that got to do with commercial enterprise? Well, that, that fundamental knowledge and expertise we built up in the university has enabled us to advise SSTL how to best build their satellites to survive the harsh environments of space and therefore to get a real commercial benefit. Um, and there are many examples of that. Right now we're working on new kinds of propulsion technology, for example, very apparently, uh, on the face of it, very esoteric uh, forms of propulsion using not chemicals but using electric and magnetic forces. Now we think that this will be very uh, valuable in the future for the uh, control of spacecraft. So the, the first steps are being taken in the university and they will be exploited commercially in hopefully the not too distant future. And those are the ideas that we will use in the future and of course on which the company's business will depend. In this type of field, as in, in the IT business, uh, everything depends on innovation, thinking ahead and being first to market with new ideas. So having an academic research team which is thinking about the, the, uh, the new requirements, the uh, application of new technologies for years ahead, is absolutely critical to the company. And in fact, if you go back and look at many of the missions and the instruments and the satellite designs that we're using today, they had their genesis in the Space Center, you know, sometimes five years ago, sometimes even 10 or 15 years ago. What is particularly unique about the setup between Space Center and SSTL is that ideas can come into the, from the Space Center, academic research gets fed into the company, the company then essentially builds and launches those, the results of those go back into the Space Center and, and that sort of that wheel turns and, and feeds the research uh, exploitation cycle. Um, having the two organizations sort of co-located and working so intimately together really makes that work well. And it sounds very simple, but actually it's something that whilst it's tried to be emulated elsewhere, very rarely actually works. And, and so we're quite proud that we've managed to make it work here.